Beloved, we welcome you, one and all, listening to our podcast. My name is Pastor Joyce, and this is I Am Ministries, aka Glory International Christian Center. Welcome again to our podcast. Our prayer is that as you listen to our messages, your lives will be changed and transformed for good. The Word of God will be delivered in simplicity, and as the Word goes forth, our hope is that you receive total healing in all areas of your lives. We praise you, mighty God. Tell me to um, Luke in chapter 15, the Gospel of Luke. In chapter 15. Talking some nights as we read from, let's start from verse 11. You know the story of the prodigal son. We're talking of corresponding actions from decisions. There are things that make sometimes uh, us not take corresponding actions and decisions. Sometimes it could be things that are there from the foundation. Sometimes it it could be things in the environment. Sometimes it could be things that affect us from other people or demonic forces. That's why Galatians 6 then says, do not be weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap. And that means the emphasis is on the well-doing, the continuity, actions derived from decisions, continuing them, um, that's when we can reap. I'm not talking of scattered actions. I mean actions that, you know, that the Lord is, wants us to take. A certain man had two sons. Verse 11 of Luke 15. Luke in chapter 15, verse 11. Says, and he said, a certain man, this is Jesus giving this parable, a certain man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent, on, sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. You know, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, even the poor man, his neighbors don't want to see him. <laughs> when he was had plenty, everybody would be running around him. When he doesn't have now, anybody take off, praise God. Uh, uh, people like to identify with big. Uh, praise God. Verse 17, and when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my father's have, have bread enough to sp- and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father. And we say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. Verse 20. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. So he's, uh, if you see from the beginning, he says, um, he spent all, then he realized what had happened and where he was. 
Because we can't go to the next level if we don't know where we are. See, he acknowledged that he had done wrong anyway. That's why there can be change. Praise God. He says, I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I will arise. And he did arise. All right? So he arose and made a move in the direction of his thought and decisions to arise. There are many reasons there. For, first of all, you know, one thing is to be rich, to, be, to go down from nothing. It reduces beyond, even below the person who had something who didn't have at all before to start with. Because uh, you've tasted of the, of the wealth. To come down is quite uh, terrible. All right? So it's, uh, that's why some people, even when they have, if they lose, maybe they have 10 million, they lose like eight, have only two. They're still millions, but there's sometimes some of them have to do some horrendous things, taking their lives or lives of people around them or two. You know, praise God. Hard to hear that a lot in the news. Because they, they, even if there's two million, they feel they are finished. Because they are, they are confident, like we sharing on Sunday, is in the things. So when they lose it, they're finished. Now, this man had every reason to keep running. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, do everything to get away from uh, acknowledging that he, he did wrong. Because that's where they will, that will lead to the change. But he thought. So if he didn't arise, no matter how much he meant it, no matter how much he said it or even thought of it, he would not have encountered mercy, grace, and restoration. Now, if you read in verse, we're still in Luke 15. Verse 22, but the father said to his servant, bring forth the best robe and put it on me, on him, and put a ring in his, on his finger and shoes on his feet. The ring reestablishes the deal. You get it? <laughs> Praise God. Uh, now he says in verse 13, I am no worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of the higher servants. Uh, it is not his doing that is his identity. Sometimes situations when I attach a stigma to names like blind Batimas, you know, barring this or whatever and all that, but the name is still there. If you know your name, you keep going, the, the thing will be raised by the blood of Jesus and by the name, by what you know. All right, praise God. So the stigma <laughs> can be attached to the name, but the name is there. He is not... See, if he was, if his name is changeable, his person, then he can be higher servant to the son tomorrow. But uh, his actions moved him away from the sonship, but he was still a son. See? So he took the identity of what he pursued. Like we said before, he said, those that were trust in the things, they become like the things. We said the things come and go. We'll continue that area on Sunday. The things come and go. Proverbs in chapter, you can see, Proverbs, look at Proverbs 23. We'll, get, we'll still do some on, it on Sunday. Proverbs 23 verse 5. Say, without set thy eyes upon that which is not, for which is certainly make themselves wings, they fly away as an eagle towards heaven. <laughs> Which means it can disappear. We hear things happening on the news. We'll get to that on Sunday. Yeah. It can disappear anytime. But us will not be disappearing anyhow because the devourer is already rebuked for our sake. All right? <laughs> Stay anchored in him. Let your trust and confidence be in him, not in what you're keeping or what you're not keeping. All right? Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Now, in verse 23, and say, Bring me hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. So, for this, my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and his son. And they began to be merry. 
Praise God. For this my son was then in verse 25. Now his eldest son was in the field. And he came and drew nigh to the house. He heard music dancing. And music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, Unto, and he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he had received him safe and sound. And he was angry, and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgress I at, I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gavest me a kid, that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with hallows, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should be, make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead and is alive again, and was lost and is found. Now, See, the guy was angry, the one that was good, so to speak. Sometimes, some people sometimes feel that if they have been serving, you know, how come blessings go to that guy or those people that are new converts, have blessing and God using them, <laughs> or to that new convert, that unserious person. Uh, they antagonize, judge, ostracize, label those that they should have helped to stand. Are you getting me? Because there's nothing that is fine now. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians in chapter 1, in verse 4, you can look at it, especially for the purpose of those who are in practice that I wanted to follow with this more. Um, as they open the scripture, 2 Corinthians in chapter 1, in verse 4. Second Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 4. Verse 3 now. Say, Blessed be God, verse 3, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. All comfort come from him. Who comforted us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Remember where you were and where you came from. Are you getting me? <laughs> Even if you're standing so strong now. There were times you were flaky. There were times you were not serious. Probably there were times you were not that stable. So the dimension, the, the, the area of struggle of that person may be different from me. Now the guy who came from the field had his issues, but it was not. it was covered by his degree of success in quote. He was still good in the field. Because the moment he came... The, the anger, because the brother has, been, has gone, either he did not forgive his brother who had messed up and all that, so he showed. Are you getting it? So he had his issues, <laughs> but he was covered by his self-sex, so to speak, or his wealth, or what he had now. He was in a good place, but he felt he was uh, doing so good. So he says, comfort with the comfort you have received. He, was, he had that in his heart. He was still standing. Scripture says, carry one another's burden. If you read the scripture of love, 1 Corinthians 13, it keeps saying long suffering, patience, you know, long suffering, patience, long suffering, patience, long suffering, patience. Hmm? Kind. You know, so we go towards it. There's no way. If you get to that point where you don't realize where you were, are you getting it? Or where you are, and you think you're absolute and it's finished. And, you know, so you can't be correct. Nothing can come around you. You, are, it does, you can step on somebody's head and it's fine. If you get to that point, the Holy Spirit is gone. I mean, so it doesn't leave, but you're not in fellowship anymore. The heart is seared like iron. Praise God. Praise God. Glory. So we'll be acting from the point of uh, what we feel all the time without even knowing. That's bad. But that's not our portion in Jesus' name. Praise God. So the new person or the struggling person is not taking what is yours. Even if God is blessing. Are you hearing me? Your blessing is intact. Uh, the kingdom of God has enough <laughs> for everyone. 
and even more. So the fact that God is blessing has not stopped your own blessing. All right? Praise God. Glory to So there's no room for evil competition. Mm -hmm. It's very subtle. But he eats in. If the scripture can say, do not be covetous in 1 Corinthians 13. You see, covetousness will come out of fear. When you say, do not be covetous, have I not told you I will never leave you nor forsake you? So you might boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I am not afraid. So which means fear is what is bringing the covetousness, isn't it? So I try to keep mine because I'm afraid that it will be taken from me. I'm afraid that I won't have enough. I'm afraid that it won't be there. Praise God. So the brother was afraid all along. <laughs> this guy has come back now. Come back. They just forgive him. He might come in to take what is mine. The father said, no, no, no. All that is there is yours. <laughs> Nobody's taking it. The point is, but you cannot take his sonship from him. Glory to God. And in that sonship, every other thing comes. They divided what they had. How about all the other things coming? <laughs> Praise God. So he still had room to get more things. So stop fighting. For what you want to keep or don't keep, nobody's taking from you. Nobody's struggling with you. Hear me? It's fear that brings all those things. Praise God. Fear of not having or fear of losing or not having enough. So if you realize where you are, where you're coming from, if there has been that fear of insecurity or not having enough, uh, you got to deal with it. All right? Praise God. Because it will keep coming no matter what it is. No matter how much you've acquired or how much you're acquiring, you might end up even just blowing the thing instead of because you want to maintain that fact that you have enough. Praise God. Look at verse 18. It says, I will arise and go to my father. He could have stayed with guilt now. He could have stayed with self-pity. Depression, beating himself up and not move on with the thought of arising. It says, I will, so I choose to arise, isn't it? So he thought about it before making the move to go. Praise God. So sometimes we think that the longer we wallow in the guilt, the more serious we are. Doesn't that sound spiritual? <laughs> Praise God. The longer you stay, the more serious you appear uh, to have been, uh, to, do, to, to have repented. David put on sackcloth. Yeah, a show of the, what was in his heart. But he made a move towards that, talking to God. He didn't remain there beating himself and stay there. He pursued God. When we pursue God, we're no longer beating ourselves. Praise God. A retained consciousness of guilt is self-righteousness, self-worship, and pride. You hear that? A retained consciousness of guilt is self-righteousness. Because the righteousness of God says if you confess your sins, it's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. So now... And cleanse you. So there's no room for you going back. You know? so, but you have a goal to continue doing the right. That's the key. That was said here all the time. So true sorrow always moves us to change. Change is the proof of true sorrow. They think about it, you take actions, and you change. You can hear a message. You can be in church and get, whoa, wow, 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 glory, 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 glory. So you're emotionally excited about the message. Great. But is it reaching where it's supposed to reach? There must be a consciousness of that fact. That's why something when we finish, I say, thank God for what you have received. Because you remember what you have received and you, re you, you thank God when you let it affect you. You can be emotionally excited about a message. You might even be thinking of how it affects other people while you're hearing it. 
but you are not letting it affect your situation. There is no change. Your, what you're doing must lead to an action that brings about change. There must be a decision, you know, that in line with what you're hearing. That's why we hear testimonies. Because there's a cross-reference of what you hear as truth to defeat any other thing you have known or been doing that is a lie. That's why the Bible talks about casting down imaginations. How do you know what to cast down if you don't know what is real or true? So change will come with that conflict. You said the flesh lusted against the spirit. The conflict uh, and then the decision to go towards with the Spirit brings the change. Because the, spirit, the flesh will keep in the old, praise God. So that's why it says in 2 Corinthians in chapter 7, the godly sorrow leadeth unto repentance. It's a change. A change. So it's not a feeling to stay there. So every decision that, produce, that is to produce results must be accompanied by corresponding action. Yeah, I will arise and go. He went. <laughs> Praise God. If he stayed there, he might feel so bad, so guilty. I should have done this. I should have stayed my father. He would remain the same. Because <laughs> if, if he does not arise, how will he meet his father? Huh? How will he? Second Corinthians in chapter seven. We should go to Second Corinthians chapter seven. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Chapter seven. He is the way maker. Chapter seven in verse Second Corinthians chapter seven. I was going to chapter nine. The one I'm giving. Chapter seven in verse nine. Said, now I rejoice that Second Corinthians chapter seven, seven, five, six, seven, seven, chapter seven, verse nine. Now I rejoice not that you were made sorry, but that you sorrowed to repentance, for you were made sorry after a godly manner, that you might receive damage by us in nothing, so that we don't damage you in any way. For godly sorrow worketh repentance. It produces, that's the godly kind of sorrow. And that's the one, not the emotional feeling, but, oh, why did I do this? Me, me, me. And beat yourself and just stay the same way. <laughs> uh, it must push you towards God and towards change. In any way, say if God says forgive, push you together. Anybody who says, I don't need anything, I'm okay, I'm fine, and you don't listen to the list before any change, there's something wrong. No matter how we feel good about it, we will go back to where we were five years ago. God forbid, that's not our portion. Three years ago, two years ago, ten years ago. Per second, per second, if the Lord is listening for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. They produce sonship maturity, childlike maturity in growing in Him. So what is the maturity learning? That's wisdom, learning. Wisdom. A fool says there's no God. It's not, big, not because you declare there is no God. No. If we refuse the counsel of God every second, any moment, there is no God. So it's foolishness. So Now, this is not attained in one day. So which means from day to day, from second to second, every issue that comes up, there is that conflict. But you choose it. You choose what is right. So if you choose what is right, don't keep yourself in that place and assume that, well, I've been a Christian for a while. So certain things happen, you just sweep it under the carpet like it doesn't matter. <laughs> you feel ill about something in your heart towards somebody, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter even if you have ended up in an argument or something happened. Get back to God and say, I'm sorry, and continue. If you lock it and lock it and lock their seats, you know, it will relate in other people. It will come in other places. You're surprised why you're reacting somehow on your job or something you meet somewhere else. It's not what they have done. It's a seed that has been in there for a while. Praise God. Glory to God. But it has grown from stage to stage. Verse 10, for God is to repent, walk at repentance to salvation, the change, not to be repented of, 
but the sorrow of the world walketh death. See, that's the point, the feelings of sorrow. It, it does not make a change. You keep saying that. That's what I'm saying. All right? It walketh death. But godly sorrow will lead to repentance. When there's repentance, it leads to change, which brings productivity and fruitfulness, growth and change. All right? It's, it's, not, something, it's not an attempt thing. You continue. When he says the, flesh, the spirit lost it after flesh, it continues. It's not done in one day. As newborn babes desire this is the of us, so you grow. Growth is not one day. It's be not conformed to those who are, but be transformed by the reading of your mind. It's not one day. Transformed is a process. It's a process. Metamorphosis, like an insect from egg, larva, pupa, full blown butterfly. The same thing it says in 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18, as with open face. See? As we behold in us a glass, we are changed. See, we're transformed. That same word change, the same thing as transform. Be, you conf- be not conformed to this word, but be you transformed. They transform and they change the same word. Our original language is the same transformation from stage to stage. And it's an everyday process. It's not one thing I've done last year. I'm cool. <laughs> no, praise God. You continue. Sometimes it's about one little thing can just bring you back to some things you thought you had dealt with. Now, at that place, there must be grace to understand that God is the one that is your, gives you the ability. This is power, Philippians 2, 13, to will and to do of his good pleasure. But you have to acknowledge and take it. We do have to do that. So there's no much you have been a Christian for a while. And you use your age as a Christian or your familiar personality as a Christian. You know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> to make you cover up some things. You just keep going. Keep talking to God on a daily basis as a little child. He says, if you come to me as a child. A child does not mean child in the things of the spirit, but a child in the form frame of a child who is like a baby, completely dependent in all innocence on the father or the mother. See, so, so, so that's what it's not saying that you remain a baby in the Lord. That's not what it's saying. Because as newborn babes, you desire the sincere make of the world, so you grow, you grow into mature, you begin to mature. Like Hebrews 2 says, we choose strong mates. We were able to discern good and evil, good and evil all right? Praise God. The discernment becomes that proof of growth. As discernment, you learn, you keep going. You discern, you know as you learn, you know as you learn. And then you're free from stage to stage. It's not fixed in. He that the Son has set free is free indeed, positionally, experientially, we experience it from stage to stage. If you continue my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and you, the truth shall make you free. What you know at that level makes you free from whatever is affecting you at that time, you go on to the next level. So if you are struggling to let go of $10 yesterday, and you got two of it, tomorrow 100 will come. You, know, you might battle with it, oh my God. <laughs> so, so you get to, if you go beyond, very soon you're like giving out thousands, you don't, give, you don't care, praise God. Now this thousand, you might get a million, give out one thousand, that's not what I'm saying. I mean, when you give out that, the one that really squeezes you, <laughs> praise God, <laughs> praise God. So very soon you're not calculating 10 or 15, but you're saying like, hey, this is what I do. You know, there are people in the kingdom who give 60, 70, 80, 90 percent, and they have not, they are not poor. So praise God. Glory to God. So there, there are certain things you go off. You forgive one thing. Suddenly, that conference I went to, I remember I told you guys some years back, the lady had, came to the altar and said, excuse me, sir. You know, while we're ministering, and said, what if there are many people? I said, like how many? He said, 250. That's <laughs> okay. I say the same grace that helps in one person will help you in 250 people. She didn't know about forgiveness. So she was just piling it on you. For you do wrong, forget them. I just give you add more and more. Amen. Praise God. Uh, we have serious testimonies of changes that come because of people's decision. See, like the little girl, there was no, you see, the word comes, different things come. Sometimes we bind and lose. Sometimes the word just comes very straight and you take it. You just, because the, Lord, the, word, the word brings light. It drives away darkness. Like the woman they told, I was with Pastor Simon to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. She just kept quiet. And I turned around by the Spirit and said, they sold you not to say Jesus is Lord. She nodded. I just stepped back and said, Lord, what do we do? He said, pray in the Holy Ghost. I prayed within five minutes. And I said, in the name of Jesus. She just fell under power and started speaking in tongues. Because that was what we were ministering to her about the Holy Spirit. So whatever I blocked, I let go. Yeah, you understand? Praise God. 
Glory to God. So it's just a simple decision. The devil is trying to block some things with those decisions that we are not taking. Somebody hear it now. There are so many some things might look like they are trivial, but they are blocking some serious decisions that you should make. There is no certainty in hearing God because there are things that are clogging it. That's, the enemy does that sometimes, brings agitation and frustration so he can block your thought pattern in the spirit. So you are not able to take decisions that will bless you or probably bless those around you. I told you some years ago, a long time ago, we were meeting the husband. That's how we heard of the testimonies a lot when God delivered uh, some people's mom in an accident and all that. But the, the revelation came because the Lord, like, there was something that was clogging my mind. I just ran to the basement. I stood in front of the mirror and I started like preaching to myself in the name of Jesus. I said, I just stopped. Peace just came. The Lord said, don't preach tonight. Just take on this Psalm 20. One of the Psalms in Psalm 20 said, just pray with that scripture. That, that, that Psalm. That's it. But he said, I couldn't have heard the Lord if my mind was clogged. But it might look like a simple thing, but that was not the goal of the enemy. I say it all the time. The, the, the traps of the, I said, there are things that drop people back to the cross. We said it here, number after we preach like that. The, the, it's a distraction. All right? So, like a pattern, I even um, say some things that you find probably some movies or something. If you're worse, where somebody, they come and pick up a phone. So, on, so, on, so, on, so, it's happening. The guy just comes, he refuses, he forgets to take his guards. <laughs> goes angry, jumps in the car, and gets on the one, they just finish him. That's the setup of the devil, the same thing he does. Even if your, your God can be physical, people are supposed to protect you. It could be your spiritual God that is trying to make sure you don't have when you come in confrontation with certain things. So he arranges defeat where there shouldn't be defeat. But he has lost in the name of Jesus. Because every time there's a prophetic message because God wants to bring something across our pathway. Glory to God. Glory to God. Wonderful Jesus. So change is the proof of true repentance. True God, God sorrow. I mean, praise God. So your thought leads to an action that brings a change. Remember the woman with the issue of blood? If I may thought. You get it? Touch the hem of his garment. That's a thought, if I may, but touch. The scripture says she pressed it to touch action. And what happened? Result, wholeness. <laughs> Praise God. She could have said, oh, if I may, but you know, this will have been, people should even sympathize with me. A lot of things are happening around God. Oh, this is over. Maybe use her position to seek attention. She used to be very wealthy, so she must have been known. So the enemy will use that to continue the shame. She did not allow the environment to keep her. See, notice I said, fear limits. When faith, it's not just because I'm quitting my scripture. I mean, when you make a direction towards God, no matter what is holding you back, that's, a, that's faith. It doesn't have because you jump. I have faith. <laughs> that could be faith in faith, not faith in God. True change comes because of faith. Godly sorrow, faith. Because you're pressing it towards God no matter what has been the limitation. Ten lepers were coming to, came to Jesus to pray. And they were going, they were healed. One decided. But I said, let me follow this one. I think I'll come back to see Jesus to really thank him. <laughs> he decided and acted in accordance with his thought. And he was made what again? Oh, <laughs> praise God. Change that cannot be limited by any man. Or any situation. Glory to God. The new convert wants to keep old boyfriend, girlfriend who is not saved. You know that can we see all that? I did I was in counseling with new converts a lot in Nigeria. A lot. Remember I was back there. 
They say, Lord, you know that I really love you, that I, I'm sorry, I really want to, you know. <laughs> but goes back to his or her house in the evening. <laughs> Praise God. So the, 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 the godly sorrow has not led to repentance or change. It goes back to the same thing. God, you know I really love you. Praise God. And Jesus says, if you love me, you do what? Keep my commandments. So which means if you love me, move towards the change. So don't say, I'm sorry, with your mind. Still set on little and deep. We are going back there. Isaiah 16, verse 1. Isaiah 16, verse 1. It says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Verse 2, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Arise, shine. The Lord says, arise and then shine. Praise God. Make a move. The prodigal son arose and moved towards mercy. If he did not get to his father, he would not see the result of He's going, the mercy. Do you understand me? So if we don't make a move to go, we will not see the result of change. So if we allow what is happening to make us think that's the way it's going to be continuously. So let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace in Hebrews 4, 16. Hebrews 4 and 16. That we might obtain mercy. We come before we can obtain the mercy. And find grace to help in time of need. We can't find grace if we don't obtain mercy. We can't obtain mercy if we don't come to the throne of grace where he is. So the change will come only when we make move towards the change. Don't cover it with your Christianity, <laughs> so to speak. Because you blast in many tongues, all right? Praise God. Glory to God. It says, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, in verse 2. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. So the darkness and the gross darkness is intended to limit arising. So the problem in the world, the situations around, the oppositions and antagonisms and agitations of wickedness are supposed to press us down from moving up. Every move you want to make, they press down. God is the only one that can make the change. Sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes you don't have control over other people's actions around you. When Paul was to sail out as, as a prisoner, he knew they were in danger. He told the people, come, we can't do this. So. <laughs> There's trouble. And he said, no, 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 the expert has spoken. <laughs> the expert has spoken. So they went. Trouble came. It was intended to clip them. If the sea did not, if the storm did not destroy them, they were supposed to have been shot dead or okay, whatever. They were supposed to have been killed, every one of them. Every one of them. Because they were, and no prisoner is allowed to escape if they are to escape. Because they will be a danger to the environment. If the sea does not kill them, there's a collapse and they cannot do it. They will kill all of them in order to contain them, so to speak. 
So, but the, 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 the captain said, no, 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 leave these guys. Don't do that. The grace upon Paul. Are you getting it? Say that. They say, that's why I spoke. He said nothing which I say, all of him and all that sail with him. <laughs> it's a grace upon him. It was all they were looking at. So leave them alone. So nothing could stop them. So even when it's decisions of all the people, Paul still stayed with God. He spent time. He went away. Having spent time with the Lord, the Bible says the angel of the Lord appeared after much abstinence, appeared unto him. And then he spoke that he will appear unto Caesar. So not even the serpent or anything could stop that move. Because the word of God saved. He said he sent his word and he saved them. Saved their life from where? Destruction. Praise God. So notice that it says, there must be an arising for the shining to come. If there is no arising, there is no positioning for that shining. The shining is all right. So the Lord didn't say, Arise and shine, for your light is going to come. For the light has come already. It's come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Are you getting it? So it's not going to be risen. The grace of God is upon us today. Are you hearing me? And it's upon every one of us. Arise into that grace. Taking decisions to line up with the grace. Moving in the direction of that grace. Taking steps to say yes. And then you're allowed to whatever God says to do. Move in that direction. And resist and take authority over every force of darkness that will tend to want to stop us from going. The world is a wicked place. You know, we know that. There is nothing good in man, the law says. I said, men that is surrendered to God. The tendency of covetousness, self consciousness, and all that tend to want to fight for self. And it's always at the expense of the other. That's a natural process of the world, so they might not even know. So if Christians are living that way, it could be the natural process too, which is not supposed to be natural to a child of God. That's why it says, be careful in that same Galatians chapter 5. He said, stop biting one another. Be careful that you're not consumed of one another. <laughs> so when it's flesh, <laughs> you consume one another. That's why it says, it's for the flesh lost against the spirit. Praise God. We will not be consumed in Jesus' name. Somebody hear me? Praise God. Now, you see, so, so they, they, there must be an arising. They move. They move towards what is spoken. They move towards the word of God. They move towards what you have received. They move towards whatever God is saying right now. Praise God. They move towards God Almighty. We, we cannot live life where you just go, just anyhow. As events come, as situations come, we just keep going. Nothing. Just uh, There is no drive to pursue God. That's not the intention of Christianity, you know. It's the pursuit of him. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. You see, the goal is continue to know God. That's the bottom line. You know? And when you are knowing him, every other power falls down. Huh? Are you hearing me? Darkness cannot comprehend light. The devourer is rebuked for your sake. So he says, the darkness, the system of the world might be in operation like we're hearing all of the fears of the world are there. And the world, I said it the other time we started this series of missions on 115, we're going to continue on Sunday again. The world is not even taking into cognizance the changes in situations. <laughs> no. <laughs> we should just continue. Even all the arrest of the pandemic, people stayed in the house. After they started coming, I was like, let's go back to where we're coming from. <laughs> just like this. So you see, things can bring an awareness. But the only thing that can change is the word of God. You know that? <laughs> yeah. Say, by grace are you say We tap into that grace and get saved. No man can change himself. And no man can continue to change himself. If you are not, you can see there now you have not opened the Bible for 
three days, five days, one week, one month, some six months, some one year. So it becomes a sound association instead of flowing with God. If you have not, go back to it today. You hear me, somebody? Go back to it. <laughs> Praise God. Glory to God. It says, For behold, darkness in verse 2 shall cover the earth. Isaiah 60. And gross darkness, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. The Lord shall arise now. It's coming up. Now it says, Upon thee. It is the shining in verse 3 now, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. When you say the Lord shall arise, it's like sun, it radiates, shooting out beams. <laughs> Hallelujah, glory to God. Woo! You know, just like, you know how light comes like, like, like the stage of a, of a theater? Maybe there were some musicians want to sing or, or whatever, actors or whatever. And then, then it's just like, and light just comes, like it floods the whole place. <laughs> Praise God. Hey, you become conspicuously favored. So people will see you clearly. So the grace of God upon your life will never be hidden again anymore in the name of Jesus. It shall be visible whatever is attempting to hide the grace of God, the gift of God, the virtues of God in your life is paralyzed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You will be noticed positively and people will respond positively to that grace on your life. And our lives in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. So they are rising, the Gentiles, the kings and the people. He said the riches of the Gentiles are laid up for us. Praise God. So they have worked hard enough. They want to give it to us right now. Somebody say hallelujah. 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 Lift your hand and just wave unto the Lord. Glory to God. We praise you, mighty God. Make moves for this change. Somebody, wherever you are. The ideas that are in your heart, as long as you know you are flowing with God. I'm not talking of ideas of panic. You just hear something, you just react. I'm not talking of that. I'm talking of, you can hear things that can bless you. That's not bad. You can see things on TV that can bless you. You can see things on the internet. But you don't just get, not the reaction of responding by fear or by what you just said. You know, this is a coming. Everybody's doing this. Oh, no, no, no. I mean when you constructively dwell on God's word based on what you are seeing now. And you see, yeah, this is it. If you're in God's way, you can come suddenly. Like the man who said, yeah, I see the salt. He just read in the scripture, you are the salt of the earth. <laughs> and he just quickly quickened his spirit. Salt business, you know. <laughs> but he has been spending time in the world. That's why I say he was read day and night. He comes into the church premises, sits down there and reads all day. Because he was just delivered from the powers of darkness. And the mean, I mean, one of the services. And started coming to church to the pastor. What do I do? Pastor said, read your Bible. He said, okay. <laughs> so I come into every day. just comes and reads the Bible from beginning to close. It's like that was his job. You know, anxiety and panic will make you feel like you're not doing anything. You know that? <laughs> That's the world's idea of success. But he stayed with God. And then God broke through. Praise God. Yeah. Sometimes people don't allow that to happen. They challenge you by what they say or what the insinuations or by the society. So it does not give you the patience to stay true with God. To see the result. And the same will turn around and say, Where is the result? You see? Because they are intermittently interrupted. That's why they tell David in Psalm 3. It says, There are so many people against me. They say, There's no help for him in God. They are the ones interrupting you know. him. They are the ones that say, Where is God now? <laughs> why has it not happened? But David said, I don't mind these people. He say, 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 <laughs> say, But thou, O Lord, you shield me from these guys. Glory, this. <laughs> I said, Thou, O Lord, that is shit for me, my glory, and lift that up from my head, my promoter. All right? My provider. Glory to God. The intention of the wicked force is to squeeze us out, but we cannot be squeezed out. We cannot be drowned. There is a lifting for somebody. There is no sinking. There is a lifting. There is no sinking. There is a lifting. It's too late for the devil. Like I was in that tunnel. It was going down after my salvation. And it was, I said, Jesus, every time you call on him, there's Savior, there's salvation. And he came and lifted me out. And he said, you will never go back there again. Somebody say hallelujah. No matter how long that tunnel wants to be, you're not going back there anymore. Thank you so much for listening to our podcasts. Please like, subscribe, and share with a friend. And continue to support and give towards the work of the ministry. 
You can do so at imgicc.org. Please let us know what God has done for you by sharing your testimonies or leaving us a comment on our website. See you at our next podcast and God bless you.